Right, what is testosterone? First of all, we think of manly hormones when we hear the word testosterone. We think of power, we think of confidence, we think of sex drive and libido. Um, honestly, it is the predominantly male hormone, but women do have testosterone uh, in much smaller amounts. They say about one-tenth as much as an optimal male has. So it is a very vital for your sex drive, your muscle tone, and your confidence, your energy, your stamina, and uh, your bone health even, and uh, it does really affect your sleep. So uh, basically, normal levels of testosterone are uh, quantified according to your sex and according to your age. So like I said, that a male uh, has a lot more testosterone than women, so they have these ranges, and the ranges are based upon age also. So uh, the a range of a normal person is different than the range of an optimal male or an optimal female. So uh, this shoe, uh, it really is um, something I'd rather talk about being optimal than being normal. So I say this because in my personal experiment experience, when I was 37, I was tested for my hormone levels and testosterone was shown to be a little high in me. Now, uh, higher than the normal 37 year old female at that age. So to me, of course my new levels were gonna be a little higher than normal because I had done everything in my power over the past 10 years to build testosterone in my body. Everything I did in my workouts, everything that I was eating, even the supplements I was taking all revolved around creating an optimal hormonal level in my body. So as a 37 year old female, I was feeling great. I had great stamina, I had great libido, I felt um, very confident, I felt very sexy. And so I was at my level, if I would have taken that same number and compared it to what a woman of the age of 25 might have been, I bet you anything I would have just been right smack dab in the middle of the optimal range or the normal range for that 25 year old. So that's where I'm seeing normal ranges, optimal ranges. There's a little variety in there. So just as long as you're aware of this so that when your doctor tests you, especially if you're someone that has been working out your most of your adult life or you have been really strength training a lot, your testosterone levels are naturally going to be a little different than what they would be if you hadn't done any of that. All right, the next question is, what are some symptoms of low testosterone? So low testosterone in females uh, is going to be a little different than the males. You're going to find a lack of menstruation. That means you're missing your period. Um, slow or absent breast growth, hot flashes, loss of body hair, loss of sex drive, and sometimes even a milky discharge from your breasts. So that would be in extreme cases. Now, symptoms uh, for males are different. They uh, are, are some, some of the same also, but um, loss of body hair, muscle loss, abnormal breast growth, abnormal breast growth. So in females, it makes women's breasts not grow, and in males, it makes them grow. <laughs> That's not fair. Um, so erectile dysfunction, osteoporosis, low or absent sex drive, infertility, fatigue, hot flashes, and difficulty concentrating. So truly testosterone is one of those hormones that affect you on all fronts. If you don't have optimal testosterone levels, you're gonna be feeling not quite yourself. And so if I would highly recommend anyone that is feeling any of these symptoms to look at ways that you can uh, boost your testosterone. How do I determine if I have low testosterone? Well, you can get uh, blood tests or saliva tests done. You can also look at the list of symptoms that I mentioned and make sure that you relate those to your doctor. Um, they will recommend, um, depending on what all is going on with you, if you have associated uh, other you know risk factors that are maybe showing some adrenal fatigue or or um, thyroid issues or you know even uh, pre-diabetes they will uh, customize what they want to have tested they're going to test more than just your testosterone levels typically uh, other things that they'll test for is follicle stimulating hormones luteinizing hormones your thyroid hormones like i mentioned the tsh the the free t3 the free t4 
um, uh, also maybe prolactin, iron, and uh, other ones that, that could really play into your, uh, your overall health are like DHEA and your cortisol levels. And then, of course, for females, the, the female hormones of progesterone and estrogen. And, uh, you know, a lot of all these hormones, they, they interrelate with each other. They talk to each other. So just because you have low testosterone uh, doesn't mean that um, none of all these other hormones are just fine and vice versa. Sometimes these other hormones can be out of balance and they, they in turn cause your testosterone uh, to not feel optimal. Okay, so it's very important that you, you, uh, you know, look at the whole, the whole gamut and uh, be wise with that. That's why I would recommend seeing a specialist that deals with hormone replacement therapy if you are so inclined. Now, if you're just starting to feel some of these effects, you know you're like, you know, getting close to 40 or 40 like me, and you say, you know, hey, I do have um, some of these symptoms but I'm not at the point to where I really want to deal with going to the doctor and getting all these tests done. So I'm going to just take matters into my own hands and, you know, go after some ways that I can naturally boost testosterone, which what are some of the treatments for low testosterone? Well, first of all, I like to go to the natural remedies first. Um, I'm a personal trainer, so I look at all the things that I can tell my clients to do that will help increase their natural production of testosterone. The, uh, like I mentioned in my own personal case, I do everything possible in my workouts, in my diet, to increase testosterone production in me naturally. So uh, some of the things that you can do, you can eat foods that stimulate uh, production of your hormones. So eating foods that are rich in uh, healthy fats like avocados, olives, nuts, uh, definitely certain nuts have been proven like walnuts, pine nuts, and Brazil nuts have been proven to really help raise testosterone levels. Um, also eating more protein, uh, especially things like eggs. Eggs are one of the most uh, highly touted proteins as far as being helpful in raising your testosterone levels because it has such a good complete mix of everything plus it has some healthy fats in it. Uh, things like you know getting a variety of meats is also important because it, it stimulates different genes in your system. So you know you need to eat beef, chicken, uh, fish, and uh, you know, do some protein powders. Protein powders have branched chain amino acids in them. They have been proven to raise testosterone levels. And also don't forget your green vegetables like spinach. There's a reason Popeye loves spinach, okay? Popeye helps him build muscle and because of testosterone. Testosterone is increased when you eat really good, healthy green vegetables. All right, other things that I really, really tout is doing proper workouts that stimulate uh, testosterone. Now, certain workouts don't, <laughs> other workouts do. So lifting heavy, getting after really building muscle stimulates testosterone. Also doing like burst type activities like plyometrics, sprinting, um, Olympic lifts, things that take power, that stimulates testosterone. Um, also uh, doing interval training, uh, you know, or what people call Tabata or, you know, there's all metabolic training, all these different names for it. But basically it means just really getting after it and doing things that are powerful, explosive. Think of it more of doing workouts that a sprinter would do versus a marathon runner. A sprinter has the body you want, right? That means they have a lot of testosterone. A marathon runner, they don't have much testosterone. I'm sure they do have some, but they don't really look like it, right? So don't do the workouts that marathon runners do. Do the workouts that sprinters do. All right. And then, of course, taking supplements. I'm a huge believer in supplements. I actually have my own supplements that help, uh, you know, produce hormones in a balanced, natural manner. And then also we have just so much knowledge about how these supplements can help your body build testosterone the way it wants to be built. So for instance, DHEA is a precursor to testosterone. So if you don't have enough DHEA in your system, you're not going to be able to build testosterone the way your body wants to. So that's a supplement you can take. D3 is also very interrelated with your hormone production. 
and also uh, things like omegas, your omega-3, 9, 3, 6s and 9s, uh, and branch chain amino acids I've already mentioned, uh, those are in proteins, and uh, you are the building blocks of proteins. And there's all sorts of other items. Fenugreek is one that is a huge, widely known uh, booster of testosterone, especially in men. And you know it's it's been around for years and years and years. And here's let me just read off a few more other other ones: boron citrate, rhodia, rosea. <laughs> I can't even say it. Vitamin B6, vitamin E, and zinc. Those one are some of the most powerful testosterone boosting supplements out there. Okay, now. Let's move on to the medical options. Medical options for boosting testosterone is basically testosterone therapy. It's basically taking injections or putting on a gel or a cream or uh, having pellets injected in you that actually have testosterone in them. Now, increasing your testosterone, that needs to be medically supervised. It needs to be done with a prescription. So, you know, that's why you have to get the, you know, the test done from your doctor. You have to go through the process of, of having actually been diagnosed with hypogonadism and then go into the protocol of trying to increase those levels. And so that means more testing, a continual follow-up, continual prescriptions, buying those prescriptions and, and things like that. It can become costly and it can become timely and it can become, uh, you know, but it can also become a change your life. Um, if your testosterone levels uh, are, you know, back to optimal, you're going to feel like a whole new person. So, you know, sometimes it's definitely worth it to go the medical route if you are, don't have any success with the natural remedies. All right. Now, that brings up the question, what are some of the risks associated with testosterone therapy? Um, you know, the medical side of things, it seems like every prescription, <laughs> there's, a, there's a risk to it. Well, the first thing is, is just what I mentioned. You know, you have, it comes, it, the cost and the time and, and the, the error, you know, it takes a little time to get that right balance. Um, you know, your doctor's not going to know exactly how much you need um, because everybody metabolizes testosterone differently. And, uh, you know, so you're going to have a little trial and error period in there where you might have some weight gain. You might uh, feel some, you know, mental issues like a little more increased anxiety or anger. Uh, you might see some acne develop or you might have uh, some hair growth if, if you're a female. Um, and then uh, things that are silly, just even like excessive body odor and uh, or oily skin. So some of those items, you know, you just have to kind of work through as you're getting your levels optimized. The other side of it is that it, when you take testosterone uh, or any hormone, uh, add it to your system, uh, your body stops making it eh, like it used to. It doesn't, it, it really shuts down its own natural production of that hormone. So over time, you're gonna see that you become more and more dependent on the injections or on the, on the, um, the therapy that you're getting. And you know, that's something that you have to take into account. Um, also, you know, some of the risks are, uh, is shown to um, increase uh, the, the growth of cancer cells if you actually have cancer already, say like prostate cancer. Uh, it may increase some cardiovascular issues. So if you are at risk for cardiovascular disease, um, you might want to, you know, just really, you know, consider that when uh, thinking about taking some testosterone therapy. If I'm diabetic or have high blood pressure or if I'm taking prescriptions, is it safe for me to take a natural testosterone booster? Well, um, I would say it's much safer to do the natural remedies often when you have situations like that than do the medical, you know, prescriptions. But no matter what, if you are in question, if you're being medically supervised for anything, you should consult your doctor about what you're taking. Um, you shouldn't just go ahead and jump in and take supplements of any sort uh, without your doctor's supervision because there may be um, interactions with prescriptions that um, you know you don't know about with certain supplements. So you definitely take your label to the doctor, 
ask them, you know, what is this safe for me to take? Um, you know, since I'm diabetic or since I'm on high blood pressure medicine or since I have a history of cardiovascular disease, is there anything in here that might interfere with the prescriptions that I have? Also, women that are pregnant or lactating do the same thing. Make sure that you get your doctor's approval before you take any supplements, not even, not just testosterone boosters, but any supplements. Um, the key thing is with testosterone boosters that I truly love is that it's a step that is natural before getting the injections, before getting the prescription, before spending the money on all the doctor visits. And it's something that you can do. You can uh, see the results for yourself. You can try it out. If the dose is, say like even, you know, the, the great thing with even a supplement is, say you don't want to go for the full dose right away. Just take a few of them and see what what it does to you. See if it has any bad side effects. But the good thing is, is with anything that's natural, it's not gonna you know really cause dramatic, crazy side effects because it, it, they are highly regulated. And, you know, you can't just put out sub substances out there that are dangerous to people and uh, get away with it. So definitely look into you know talking to your doctor about the supplements, but also don't be afraid to, you know, try some things, see if it works. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of really great uh, ideas here for you to integrate uh, that are natural, that can help you boost your testosterone. And like I said, optimal testosterone levels is a blessing and you will absolutely love the benefits from feeling the confidence that you get from having optimal testosterone. So go for it, boost that testosterone and let us know what you think and definitely let us know if you have a success story for us and we'll be in touch. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.